Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, it's time to take global headlines, making um, stories in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers is Professor Camilu Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kanu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining Good morning and thank you for having me. Yes, always fantastic having you here. Okay, so we're going to go straight into the papers. And um, the first one I'm looking at here is The Guardian. It says, the major headline here says, Estimators peg exchange rates at 1,400 Naira to the dollar as Naira finds fair value. Do you think this is a fair value? We've seen the Naira um, go as, as much as 1,900, 2,000 Naira to the dollar um, in recent weeks. And right now, well, it is at 1,400, but do you think that's a fair value if estimators are pegging our exchange rate at that? Uh, I don't think this is a, a fair value. Um, Six months or seven months ago, uh, it was exchanging around 460 something mm. to uh, what it is now. So within a span of about, uh, let's say, half, less than half an, a year, uh, it's almost uh, triple. So now projecting that it is going to be about 1,400. 1, uh, to me, I don't think that is a fair value. And secondly, look at what they say. This is not going to happen in the next few months. They are projecting that it's going to be for the uh, in about one year time. Mm. Okay, so they are projecting, and um, I think that to me is not fair because we have to know Nigeria is a consumer uh, country. Okay, so even if we fix it at uh, 1,400, what it means, uh, still inflation would be very high because we will be export importing uh, our needs and then exporting raw materials at that rate. So to me, I don't think that is fair value. The government needs to look into it uh, in order to ensure that uh, they meet uh, the needs of Nigerians, not just the economic dimension. Mm. So what do you think we can do to um, ensure that our Naira is at least is stronger? Um, we're not saying it has to be one Naira to one dollar, although we've seen that in the past, like in years, uh, um, many years ago, I heard that, you know, the dollar used to be, um, in fact, was even sometime less, sometimes less than the Naira. Um, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I mean, it's not magic, right? But if we could at least maybe we come down to the 460 you were talking about, what do you think we can do to ensure that our currency gets stronger? Yeah, you see, my, my past experience, let me give you just a little bit of history. When I was to travel for my master's, that was in 1980, I got a naira, I mean a dollar at 75 bubble. Um, So I don't think it is realistic that we hope we are going to that direction. But actually what we are hoping is for uh, the Naira to appreciate in such a way that um, uh, it, you know, minimize this wide gap that we have. And the way the government will do uh, is um, we show up our industrial base. Most of the reason why we are having is because we import, we import uh, our basic needs. So if we can now create... Uh, conducive environment for our industries to thrive. As I think that will minimize our dependence on importation and that will now bring the, uh, the dollar down and raise the value of uh, the naira. But so long as we remain on that direction, I think it will be very difficult for us to do. And the other thing is actually the government has to look at uh, this issue of borrowing. Mm. Uh, you know, borrowing, borrowing is what um, put us into this condition because the more we borrow, the more conditionalities are put on us and one of which is for us to devalue the Naira. So we have to look inwards to me. Uh, we look at in, inwards and try to uh, make do with the things that we have and that is the way uh, we can bring the Naira, I mean, we can raise the value of the Naira and bring the dollar down. And uh, the other way, which is very difficult, but I think 
that will have been the most feasible solution. That you see countries like uh, Egypt have now moved to BRICS and they don't uh, deal with the dollar. So if we move to BRICS, uh, that will solve our own pro problem mm -hmm. faster than what we have. But the international politics is what Nigeria uh, could not without, uh, you know, have the strength to. But if we can take the bull by the horn and look at that direction, I think that will help us greatly. Okay, so talking about um, moving to BRICS, the foreign minister said last week that Nigeria is to apply um, for BRICS membership in two years. So we're hoping that um, that would happen and maybe we would not have to look at the dollar. But where we are now, if we have to look at where we are now, if we're being honest with ourselves, our economy isn't thriving, it isn't doing great. And so you have to probably just you know, do a deep dive and say, this is where I'm at, this is where I want to go, and what can I do, what can that, what vehicle will take me to the place where I want to go? So now my question is, what are some, if I, if you can permit me to pick your brain a little bit, what are some exports that you think, if we look at ourselves now in Nigeria, these are some exports that we know we can do that is sustainable and that can bring revenue to our country? You see, if you take, um, uh, petroleum, uh, mm -hmm. you compare it with the gross uh, domestic product, which is just about 6% or so, but we rely heavily on it, mm -hmm. uh, getting about 80% uh, uh, foreign earnings from petroleum. The God has endowed Nigeria with abundant uh, resources, um, one of which is agriculture. Now, if we could now invest heavily in agriculture, I think that will help us bring down, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the naira, the dollar value. Because most of the things that we do now is we import. And we import our, uh, even our, the, our food needs. But um, if you look at it, the whole 36 states, uh, they have uh, one kind of agricultural product that uh, they have competitive advantage on. So if the government will leverage on that, I think we'll... In the short time, we will now reduce the issue of our uh, food security. We we'll may have uh, the chance to, uh, you know, even export uh, our food. Now, one of the reasons why we are where we are in terms of food uh, uh, scarcity is because the naira is cheap. So our neighbors come to buy food, uh, which is cheaper for them to do that. But had it been there is synergy between the federal government and the state government, and they now look at this competitive advantage and show up security to ensure that uh, we try to target not only rainy season farming, but throughout the year farming, okay? If we can do that, I'm sure uh, the issue of, you know, devaluation of the Naira, that even if we don't go to BRICS, uh, uh, we'll be able to... I uh, see some progress, rapid progress. <laughs> okay. So speaking on um, food crisis, I mean, that's something you had mentioned. Um, there is a small headline at the bottom that says, Governor unveil proactive steps to address food crisis. Do you think they're doing enough? Um, do you think we're seeing enough steps? Fine, they've, they've, there's been the palliatives that they want to share to people. Um, we've not really seen that happen. There's been a little bit of a delay in that. But do you even think that's enough? Do you think that can, you know, cut down on the whatever we're going through right now? Do you think it's, it's enough to um, just help with the food crisis or food security that we need as a nation? Yeah, that, that will go a long way. But you see, you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. When we say agriculture, the, the, the government has to diversify. We have to reduce our dependence on oil. Now we have uh, agriculture, that is one thing. There are other areas which uh, God has endowed Nigeria with. We look at those areas, we diversify. But uh, one of the shortest way, again, is we create a, an enabling environment for our industry to thrive, making energy affordable, okay? The energy in terms of electricity and alternative so sources of energy is also will make it because by the time uh, our industries are holding and by the times we don't have a, a conducive environment, even the foreign direct investment that we 
put our own energy, try to attract. You know, it's not what's coming. And the ones we have, they are migrating, they are living out the, the country. So in such a situation, we need a holistic approach. Take all these dimensions. That is when we can boast on short-run basis if we first agriculture or first run uh, short run basis and when we try to diversify we are now taking a longer measure which will put us on sound footing uh, so that at least the giant of africa as we are known will wake up from our slumber and will be able to feed ourselves and will be able to uh, export for our needs then uh, we'll be able to stabilize our own currency well, I mean, that's the hope of every Nigerian to be able to stabilize the, our currency so that, I mean, we can compete with other currencies. You want to be able to buy things and, um, and they don't seem ridiculously expensive just because your Naira is weak. And then obviously you need more for, um, you know, just a few dollars. It's, it's, it's sad, but I mean, it's where we are and we're just hoping that our currency will get better. But there's another headline here that says delays on certain uncertainties in student loan scheme compound woes so food security is on one hand um you know securing the lives and properties of nigerians is on the other hand and we're still talking about loan scheme that the government um, the president had you know rolled out last year he initiated he said you know there's going to be student loans but now you're still seeing delays and uncertainty in this and right now they're saying that it compounds the woes of nigerians what do you think about this one Really, that is, uh, that is to be expected um, because, you know, one major problem with us is uh, extreme uh, bureaucratic bottleneck. Things that we can do uh, within a short time, but our bureaucracy has the tendency to oh, by delay the whole thing. And now, at the end of it, what we are going to see is a blame game. Uh, the executive, the presidency will say they have done it. It is not their fault. And somebody in the uh, uh, bureaucracy will be sitting on it. And then, you know, uh, this loan, I mean, this student loan, uh, we have to be uh, clear about it. It is not that the government who is going to pay. They are going to be like a surety so that banks will pay. And, you know, uh, investors are very conservative. They all, almost always make sure that uh, if they invest, they have the means to recuperate what they invest. So unless there is tight policy on it, on, on the issue of loan, and unless the government comes out with measures which will assure uh, the, the banks to do it, we are going to see this delay. And the other thing that will delay it is also corruption and favoritism. We are going to see much about it. So I think, uh, to me, the, the government didn't do its homework uh, well. Uh, it takes it for granted that uh, if you do it, it will run like a clock. But we have forgotten the Nigerian factor. And uh, this is why we are seeing the delay. Unless we address the Nigerian factor, uh, this thing will go like all other policies. We have several policies. We have made them. And now they are history. Some are then, you know, they are there, but nobody uh, sees them and nobody feels their impact. So unless we take measure, this student loan is going to follow suit, will be like the rest. All right, let's move over to some security matters. Um, there's a headline that says, Security agencies mom as search for abducted Kariga school pupils continues. So we have no information. The security agencies are being mom. Um, what do you think about our security in Nigeria? We're seeing... Um, week in week out you're hearing stories like this where people are being abducted people are being kidnapped um bandits are you know invading communities and all of these things are happening um don't you think the security agencies are supposed to be doing more especially giving more information on what's going on how they're investigating um just so that people can you know be be a little bit calm um with the whole situation that's going because i'm sure there are people who are um scared living in anxiety because of this story is. So, do you think them being mom is the way to go? And what do you just think about our security system in Nigeria as a whole? You see, the security system leaves much to be desired. Okay? 
So keeping mum is a way of, you know, trying to make sure that um, at least they are not uh, under attack by the public. But, you know, this one now, how many days? But go back to history, uh, 2014, Chibok girls were abducted. It's now 10 years. Still, some of them have not been recovered mm. for 10 years. And there are so many cases of abduction that have not been able to, uh, the, the security has not been able to resolve it. So I think that uh, this is just a way of keeping the heat out of themselves by keeping quiet on uh, the issue. But uh, to me, that is a wrong way to do it because you need to reassure the public that you are doing something. And you need to get the confidence of the public that they can trust the security agents that they, they will be able to handle it. Uh, if you look at, I think it is uh, the Guardian. Yeah, I mean, not the Guardian. I think it's a uh, punch. Mm. If you put it along with this one, uh, the only thing they come out is they say they are now uh, fear that at least 14 states, mm. schools in 14 states will be attacked. So you see, this is not the way we assure the people. It means you are admitting that you are incapable of handling the uh, situation. Uh, when you come, instead of uh, reassuring the people that you are doing something and the people to see it on ground that you have done it, that you are able to rescue the uh, children, about 256, I think. Now they are quite on that. And now another story comes out that in part, not only those uh, 200 and uh, something, mm. but uh, Otin State and Abuja are under threat. So I think this is very a very dangerous thing, and uh, it uh, you know shows the uh, incapacity of uh, the security agencies to handle the situation. Right. Um, I have one more story on the Guardian, which says federal government lawmakers fault budget padding claim Urua, um well budget padding claim Urua argues probe what do you think about this the human um writers of nigerian association had come out to you know make this allegation and they are asking um to probe this case what do you think about this whole budget padding you see this is this is something that uh the guardian and uh, i think two other papers carried including the nation and so on i think uh some northern governors uh you know accused the uh, senate of pardoning uh, you know the budget to a tune of about three trillion naira and now instead of you know the government to look into that we are now seeing the usual same blame game uh, some are blame the, blaming this and people, you know, the government is saying, no, we don't have two budgets. We are <coughs> operating only one budget mm. and that the pardon is high. And the senators are saying this one thing. Now, what Nigerian expect is if we have such a allegation, very powerful allegation, especially coming from the same Senate. Now, I think the government should uh, be uh, honest enough to look into the matter. Instead of dismissing it, you know, uh, it should look at uh, the issue. Or at least the Senate itself should now initiate, uh, you know, investigation into the uh, allegation so that Nigerians will know the truth. Not only knowing the truth, but, uh, uh, you know, Nigerians will be assured that there is, um, uh, the government is on their side trying to implement what has been decided. But other than this, I think this blame game will just whittle down, water down everything. And after maybe a week or two of blame here and there, the whole matter will die and nobody will investigate it. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that Nigerians deserve some form of transparency from the government. We need to know what's going on. Um, if there's budget padding, we need to know. And you shouldn't even be padding the budget. I mean, say this is what we need. This is what we need. You use that and you utilize the resources. We can't be um, spending for no reason um, in Nigeria, especially with 
uh, given economy at the moment. So um, some level of transparency would be appreciated um, if the federal government could give us that. But I'm just going to move over to Nature News now. The major headline here talks about food crisis. And it says millions face food crisis in Nigeria. Um, that's the CH report. But there's a small headline um, on the side that says Tinubu to launch food security agriculture and mechanism agenda today and then um, there's another headline that says nigeria can't fix current food inflation with monetary policy and that is being said by adesino so this is the whole food crisis we're saying millions of nigerians are facing food crisis there's food inflation food inflation is um about 35 point something percent at the moment um with general inflation at 29.92 percent now the president is launching um you know an agriculture um mechanization agenda and food security to say to ju you know just tackle um the crisis that we're in however I'm hearing that Nigeria can't fix the current food inflation with monetary policy. What do you think about all of this? And what are the ways that we can actually fix um, this a mess, if I can call it that, that we're, go we're currently in at the moment? Because it's, it's quite alarming that people can barely feed, people can you know, barely afford anything. You go to the market, things are super expensive. And food is one of the basic, not, not one, it is the basic um, necessity is what you need to leave really and so if you can't afford that and we have a food crisis what do you think we need to do and all of the steps that the the federal government you know they're trying to put in place you see um the whole the three stories are all correct that nigerians are facing i mean they're all true uh, that nigerians are facing a uh, food crisis and there is uh, this uh, you know high cost of it and uh, i think the real solution is what uh the uh, I, what do you call him uh, the, the former minister and now chairman of agb has said monetary policies will not solve the problem because you keep on pumping uh you keep on pumping money uh, saying that you are going to give uh, uh you know palliatives while you don't address the thing if you want this is what i said earlier on that if we want and uh, realistically want to do it, we should now target all round season pan, not just uh, giving palliatives. And the government knows what to do. Uh, we need a synergy. Like I said earlier on, each state, it has certain advantage in some crop that they produce. This is where the government will go into a synergy with the state government and now see we address for example here in Kano uh, we had over 23 as them they, they are not being used and even we use them I think Kano in a, with these dams uh, they you know some of them are since uh, the past uh, military time uh, that was out of Baku. since then they have not been used so had it been that we are serious on this issue these are the areas that we are going to look into and instead of saying you give either Anka Barowa or you give these things, then you create a bureaucracy around it. You just uh, dash, dish in money to people who are not even farmers and they chop the money and nothing is done. We could go down to that. And secondly, we have to address the issue of insecurity because one of the reasons why we are seeing food scarcity now is because majority of the farmers have been scared uh, they cannot go to their farms and farm, okay? And then we also have to take the issue of mechanization. Uh, you know, the, the government will have to look at uh, how do we invest in uh, agriculture so that we can be able to address this issue. But the way you now keep on coming over politicizing it, launch this, spend the money, uh, nothing will be done, and then another uh, launching will come and you spend money, this is not the way to do it. So I think what uh, the president of ADF said is uh, the best solution that we cannot address the problem through monetary policies. We have to go down uh, the uh, ground and take agriculture, uh, you know, seriously so that we can have all season uh, production. Mm. Okay, let's move over to the business NG. There's a headline that says IMF to FG, the federal government, implement cash transfer program before addressing fuel 
electricity subsidies. Um, I really want to get your thoughts on this because we know that the fuel subsidy being gone has had a ripple effect on Nigerians because, I mean, you need fuel for transportation, you need fuel to run your business, especially the, with the fact that we don't have constant power, so you need an alternative power source. Um, you need fuel for, like, almost everything, right? Um, and then the fact that they said there's some form of electricity subsidy that we cannot sustain. Um, the Minister of Power had said that, that we cannot sustain um, the electricity, electricity subsidies that we have, and so we need to take that out. Although the Senator said... Um, you know what, or rather the House of Reps, yes, and the Senate has said, you know, we can't, we can't afford to take that out right now. But if the IMF is coming out and saying we need to um, implement cash transfer programs first before addressing all of this, um, what does that even mean? Because all of these things, the subsidy has had a ripple effect on us, as I say, and then if we're not addressing that, isn't that not you know, deciding not to help the Nigerian, um, the Nigerians with their current situation in the whole economy that we have and we see right now that maybe is not thriving as we expect it to be. Um, is the cash transfer program, um, does that supersede um, the electricity and fuel subsidy? I want to get your thoughts on that. You see, uh, if we are to tell ourselves the truth, there is no country that gets out of the deldrum by following the recommendation of IMF and World Bank. The whole problem we are in is as a result of our taking advice of IMF and World Bank. So it's high time for the government and for our leaders to do away with that. Now, by saying we need cash transfer, you should remember that just two days after IMF said, uh, talk about uh, removing subsidy on energy, electricity. The minister come and talk about it. They said it, and two days later, the government uh, said they are going to withdraw it. Now, to me, I think it's a diversionary tactic. What they are trying to do is they know Nigerians are not resilient. They know Nigerians, you know, have the tendency to forget anything. They know that Nigerians, when you dish out something like we said in, in a house uh, proverb, you know, like uh, like chicks, you know, when you spray grains, the chick will run to that direct direction. So what they are telling the government is give this conditional transfer and do this thing. The people's attention will be away from uh, the measures. And then the government will easily come and take out the uh, you know, the subsidy on electricity. And that will further kill our industries. Already, uh, you know, statistics have shown that in the last uh, how many years, over 500 major industries have collapsed. And many, uh, those, uh, you know, the foreigners are now uh, migrating out. Okay. And now we are making it, uh, we are making things unaffordable. So the whole thing is to make us dependent. Uh, to break our own uh, industries. So uh, to me, I think the best thing is for the government to do away with uh, this thing and now face the problems. Nigerians are in problem. Uh, this solution to, uh, you know, by IMF IM, IM will not take, uh, take us out. In fact, they will take us deeper and deeper into that trap. They will take us deeper and deeper into the uh, problems. And, uh, you know, by the time the government tries to hit uh, to the cries and, uh, you know, listen of Nigeria, it will be too late. So I think this is a high time we do it. The, the legislature should stand against it, and uh, the government should listen to Nigerians. Uh, IMF is not, a, you know, a, a, for Nigeria. It, uh, the government should do for Nigerians, not for IMF. Mm. Okay, so I want to take, there's a small headline at the top that says, foreign investors still wary as Cardoso pitches for hot money inflows. So the president has, you know, been moving around looking for foreign investors to come into Nigeria. Um, but then we don't really have a thriving economy that's sustainable for these people to come in. Some of them will, some of them will not. Um, but, I mean, we always keep saying it, we need to put our house in order before we can ask other people to come visit and stay. Um, however, they're still wary with Cardoso um, pitching for hot money inflows. What do you think about this one? 
it's, it's true. They, they will not come. Even if they come, you see, it will be peripheral uh, industries that will come. The major ones that uh, will be of any significant impact, they will not come and invest. Because, like I said earlier on, you know, investors are uh, very conservative. Uh, conservative in the sense that if there is anything in, in the environment, they tend to either withdraw or they refuse to come in. And the whole thing is we should now tell ourselves, like I said, truth. Look, by uh, just putting emphasis on trying to uh, attract foreign investors, we are, not, we are making ourselves dependent more and more on outsiders. Why can't we look inwards and see we can develop our own industries? Look at even smaller countries in Africa. We are able now, without say, emphasis on such foreign investment, uh, they are able to Ghana in use uh, what the, the, the resources they have, and they are better off. Okay, so why do we have now the giant with all the abundant resources that we have? We just keep on shipping, you know, hopping, shuttling from one place to another, trying to attract foreign investors. And uh, while we don't do anything to make sure that we create the environment for our own industries to take off. So it is remnant of this colonial uh, economy where we are just importers of raw materials and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, in, uh, exporters of raw material and importers of our basic needs. That is what we are going to do. Unless we take the bull by the horn and try to industrialize on our own what we have, yeah, we cannot be able to develop by attracting foreign investors. They will come, even if they will come, they will invest and make sure that they get a fair deal and, uh, you know, give us little and take all the resources and we'll still remain dependent on uh, foreigners while, uh, you know, nobody uh, will do things better than Nigerians to ourselves. So it's better we look inwards and uh, take a cue from other countries and see how they do it, and they are now better off. Mm. Okay, let's um, just move over to the punch quickly. Um, there's a small headline at the top that says only foreign borrowing. I mean, we're talking about foreign investors, um, but this says only foreign borrowing can save Naira. Clear CBN debts, and that is being said by um, some economist intelligence units. What do you think about this? Because isn't that like, <laughs> you know, how do you say we need to uh, make more money, get more revenue, and then um, on the other hand, you're saying only foreign, only foreign borrowing can save the naira. And although they are charging the CBN to, um, they're charging to clear the CBN debts. But what do you think about this one? I think this is a contradiction. Yes. Uh, you cannot borrow to clear what you have because when you borrow, you borrow with interest. Okay, so you'll be in debt trap, uh, debt trap going deeper and deeper. I think uh, these are some of the problems. We think we can borrow in order to get out of it, or we sell our hard asset in order to finance this. These are not the measures that uh, will put us on sound ground. It is just temporary. Thing. When you borrow, you are deceiving ourselves uh, temporarily. We borrow the money, and now we solve uh, quickly the current uh, this. But in the meantime, the interest keep on mounting and other charges keep on mounting. We are literally mortgaging the future of our children and grand grandchildren who are to come. Because these loans, even if they are short-term loans, they are not going to be repaid uh, in the next uh, five years or some in about 10 years, some in more than that. You know, that is when you start addressing. By the time you solve those what you have quickly now, getting cash and then solving these things, you are now mortgaging the, the future. And besides, you are now pumping more money into uh, the system. And, uh, you know, as you have more money into the system, you raise inflation. So I, I don't know why we keep on thinking that um, I will be getting different results by doing the same thing over and over. I think it is, uh, to me, that is a very, very wrong thing. It's part of uh, this neoliberal, uh, you know, uh, prescription, which uh, the IMF and the World Bank are pushing down our throat, that we do this, we do this, and uh, they get their cahoots, you know, uh, supporters inside, so they are advising the government so much so that 
we have forgotten even what is the purpose of government in Nigeria. Government is about people, about their welfare, about their security. But here we are, you hardly hear anything about the people. You always talk about, uh, uh, you know, foreign investment, borrowing, mm -hmm. uh, these things, as if that is what the government is all about. Government is not a financial enterprise. It's a social enterprise. It's a contract between uh, the people and the leaders that uh, they are going to serve the people, not to serve uh, foreign investors or foreign, uh, you know, uh, banks to come and uh, give us loans. Okay, let's take a final one from the punch. This is at the bottom and it says oil earnings rise by 450 billion naira in two months. And that is being said by the federal government. Um, I've heard that, you know, our oil or our crude oil, you know, they've been sold um, in advance. But here we're seeing that oil earnings rise by 450 billion naira in two months. Do you think this is, you know, good revenue coming in? And, you know, that could at least help with the economy situation that we're going through in Nigeria. Yeah, given the situation, I think that is a, a good uh, news that at least we are getting something. But uh, on, on the surface of it, it's a very good news that we are getting some money more uh, that hopefully it will be pumped into uh, the system and we now address uh, other things. You see, one problem is there is no integration, uh, you know, backward integration between all these monies that we have and our effort to invest them and now uh, get out, uh, address social uh, and economic problems in Nigeria. That is one thing. But if you look at it again from the other side, this is what we have been saying. Nigeria trying to depend on one thing and not trying to diversify is as a source of our problem. So by the time we get such measures, I uh, will be beating our chase that we have, we have gotten these things and we will, will forget uh, the whole idea of trying to diversify. And even we diversify, we we'll see this money that is coming from oil is insignificant compared to other areas. So it makes us to neglect all other areas and now uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, anesthesia, if we can use it, temporary anesthesia, that this thing is coming. So it will take our attention and say, OK, after all, uh, we are getting this uh, much money in two months. So we, we, we now forget other areas. Hmm. All right. Um, this is where we have to drop it here. We want to say thank you for coming. And it's always nice reviewing the papers with you. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Okay, we've been speaking to Professor Camille Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayera University, Kanu. And we've just been reviewing the papers um, and just taking the global um, stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic, talking about the executive order issued on health workers living in Nigeria. Please stay with us. <music>